Hello, my name is Rich McHugh, and I manage the Digital Scholarship Commons in the library at the University of Victoria, and I'm also a sessional lecturer in the Faculty of Education. Today I'm going to talk about student perceptions of workshop and digital tools in the academic library makerspace, particularly in the Digital Scholarship Commons at UVic. Here's an outline of what I'm going to cover in my short presentation. Now this is a question I frequently get from family, friends, and colleagues. And before anyone asks, no, our unit in the library does not award any scholarship money to students. Learn, create, and collaborate describe much of what happens in the physical and virtual digital scholarship commons. We also work hard to deliver on the values of sharing and equity that are the hallmarks of all libraries. We assist students, faculty, and staff in learning digital tools and methodologies to help them pursue their passions and tell their research stories in engaging ways. We encourage interdisciplinary work across campus in order to spark cross-disciplinary conversations. We offer services to help our UVic community become well-versed in digital information fluency through one-on-one -on -one training, active learning workshops, and digital curriculum development advice. We loan the equipment and software we teach in our workshops in order to provide equitable access to those sometimes expensive tools. And I know that this may sound somewhat heretical, but I love this quote from Eric Johnson, but it describes a big part of what we do in the Digital Scholarship Commons. Academic makerspaces, which is a big part of what the DSC is, helps the university community explore and express their ideas in ways other than text. Let me just repeat that last part. The DSC helps the university community explore and express their ideas in ways other than text. Here's an example from last week, actually. Myself and two of my colleagues taught our 3D design workshop to a class of 191 engineering students via Zoom, of course, to help them discover how they could easily modify and 3D print parts for their robot kits. This would help them more easily complete a major assignment in their course. Now, during the workshop, we were asked several questions about what the DSC was, and I could tell that at least some of them were ah, I could tell that at least some of them were pleasantly surprised to find out that the library could not only provide them with journal articles but also a wide range of borrowable tools and free digital fluency workshops that they could take to teach them how to use those tools. So how do students feel about the Digital Scholarship Commons active learning workshops in particular? Now, before I go into the survey results, let me show you what some of our more popular workshops are. And by the way, we offer almost 50 workshops now. So we've got 3D design and printing, podcasting, video editing, virtual reality and 360 tours, RStudio, electronics with Arduino, uh, data analysis with Excel, data visualization and mapping, infographics with Canva. So back to the student workshop survey now that you know sort of what sorts of things that they would be learning in the workshops. We asked students about three research questions. You know, student satisfaction with the workshops. Do students value being able to work at their own pace? And would students prefer peer tutoring over flipped workshops? About 86% of students prefer or strongly prefer hands-on activities during workshops as opposed to uh, a more lecture style workshop. 14% are neutral, and no students prefer to less hands-on time in workshops. One student summed up many students' feelings by saying, having instructors there to answer little questions as they come up as you're working through a project is very helpful. It's interesting to look at, look at the breakdown of the same question by students, staff, and faculty. Note the faculty members tend to value face-to-face -face group instruction more than students, which might be in part a familiarity issue. Maybe they prefer to be taught the same way that they teach, 
which for many faculty members is a more lecture style format. Anecdotal evidence suggests that ironically, part of the reason for this is that some of the faculty members uh, did not complete their pre-work assignment and wanted that in-class instruction to help make up for that. 100% of students either agreed or strongly preferred the ability to work at their own pace. One student said, I like the tutorial sheets that walked you through a simple project and it was nice working at your own pace. 90% of responding students signaled a preference for the workshop over peer-to-peer -peer instructional format. While no student stated why they prefer workshops, the fact that they attended an introductory workshop may indicate that they were interested in the topic or technology, but were unsure where to start or what questions to ask one of their peers. Sample bias might also be a factor considering that students who prefer peer-to-peer -peer mentoring may be less likely to take a workshop and therefore complete this uh, post-workshop survey. So student feedback from interviews. Now before I talk about what we learned from my interviews, I should say that one of the key questions that we wanted to explore in those interviews is why our workshop participation rate almost exactly mirrors the UVic student population. From my conversations with managers at other academic makerspaces across Canada and, the, and in the US, it appears that most of them have a very high percentage of men using their makerspaces, especially if they're housed on an engineering building on campus. So why do we think our participation rates are roughly equal? I'll just play this interview and it describes that and goes into one of the interviews that we did. There are three reasons why we think that the makeup of our workshops mirrors our university population. First, our makerspace is housed in the library which is traditionally common ground without any formal attachment to male-dominated faculties or departments on campus. Second, related to that, our space is not only open to students from all over campus, but welcomes the whole campus community, including faculty, staff, and students. And third, the workshop format is a low-stakes way to be introduced to the makerspace, especially for those who are interested but don't yet have a project in mind. To explore each of these three points, I interviewed a student who used our makerspace workshops and tools to help create her prototype of a biodegradable glow stick. Paige Whitehead is a third year microbiology and environmental studies student who loves music festivals, but doesn't like all the garbage they create, especially the toxic chemicals in almost all glow sticks. I interviewed Paige to talk to her about how our library makerspace helped her with her biodegradable glow stick project. And actually run as a full on, um, you know, a lesson that was more structured. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just great, especially someone going as a, you know, fully, you know, don't know much about the topic kind of yeah. person. It was an awesome introductory lesson, especially with the you know, the kind of portion parts where you learn the software and then learning on the actual 3D printing machine. And it's also so nice, you don't actually have to take a whole course in it. You can come for an afternoon and leave with a new skill that you can actually use and keep building on your own and then come back if you want to upgrade or refresh, but you don't actually have to, you know, enroll in a program or, you know, declare a major or a minor to actually mm -hmm. unlearn the material. People. But if you have no background in, you know, electrical engineering mm -hmm. or in software design or using these 3D modeling programs, it's really helpful to have an instructor there to just give you the basic foundations. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this Digital Scholarship Commons is all about. Yeah. So that's really what I've done is gotten, taking these courses here, feel like I then have the foundations or at least know the language enough that I can ask the right questions mm -hmm. to continue kind of building up my um, experience using these tools. It, like a library is, especially at a university, it's kind of the neutral zone. <laughs> there's, there's sometimes, you know, like, there's the engineers and 
you know, they maybe rag on like philosophy students and back and forth and back and forth. But the library is really this kind of common ground where there's there's everything you need for any subject it would be in like a, somewhere in the library. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, people are always walking through and studying here. So I think even just having it in a space where it's kind of this neutral, everyone is welcome zone, absolutely. Um, I know quite a few people feel intimidated or not welcome in certain you know, buildings on campus mm -hmm. because of maybe their gender, maybe their, um, their what they're studying for like this whole suite of reasons. Yeah. Um, but I feel like a library is probably one of the least intimidating in, in that sense mm -hmm. for, for any, every student is welcome. Yeah. Yeah. So in conclusion, student perceptions of digital fluency workshops and tools lending have been very positive. As you can see, the popularity of our active learning workshops have been steadily increasing since we started offering them back in 2017. We've not only been increasing the number of workshop sessions we offer, but have also continually been creating new workshops, sometimes at the request of faculty. Our Excel and infographic workshops are great examples of instructional materials that we created at the request of UVic instructors and have become two of our most popular workshops. And just in case you're interested, all of our workshop curriculum are Creative Commons licensed and are available on the Digital Scholarship Commons website. And I'll put links to those in the chat.